Should we start? Would you like to introduce yourself a little bit, Federica? You know, uh, kind of what you're, uh, how you came to R and what you're doing for with R at the moment and things like that. Sure. Um, first of all, thanks for for this opportunity for 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 doing this uh, uh, this group, which is very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so I came up to our studio uh, a year ago. So I am a statistician. I'm a naturally. Um, so I've worked a bit of in corporates, a bit of privately as a consultant, uh, but um, as an old school uh, learner, uh, I did much theory more than uh, practice. Uh, so um, I'm, I, I was an Excel user. Uh, but then a year ago, more than a year ago now, uh, with this uh, pa pandemic, I've started to, to see the, the, the damages of the virus, uh, uh, and then uh, data increased in, in immensely, so I needed a better and more stable uh, program to use. I've started using R. I've done some courses and everything, so now I'm not uh, very fluent, but um, I'm, I feel I'm good. Cool, cool. And I've made a couple of apps, uh, obviously using um, uh, made ones and then modifying. And then, but uh, the, the, uh, I, I look forward for, for future uh, better uh, improvements. So here now uh, I'm going to present you chapter 10, which is the dynamics user interface. And I'm going to uh, share my screen with the, the chapter, so you're going to see uh, clearly what I'm saying. Uh, I take the questions and for, for, for the panel discussion at the end. Um, so. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. okay. Um, the dynamic user interface, I don't know if you can see clearly because I have many things here. I need to. Okay. Uh, the dynamic user interface. Uh, it's a chapter that is made uh, of three main uh, parts, which are the updating inputs, the dynamic visibility, and the third part, which is the uh, rendering part uh, of the user interface, which is made creating uh, user interface with code. Um, um, it seems like a bit complicated, but at the end, it is not. Um, at the end of this explanation, uh, you will be able to understand what is uh, um, how uh, and what is uh, a dynamic uh, um, to be applied to your app. Um, what basically what is um, a dynamic um, user interface. Um, and um, how can we do to create a dynamic user interface? Um, there are different, uh, several functions, several ways, uh, but the, the more, uh, the, the, let's say the, the, the clear ones uh, are three main uh, steps that you can use to uh, set up a dynamic uh, user interface. So one way is to um, change, um, is by changing the user interface using a code run in the server function. Uh, as we know, uh, there are two main parts in an app. Uh, and we are going to update uh, our user interface um, 
um, um, applying a function in the user interface for um, um, updating the, the server uh, and to uh, in this way to see uh, um, an update up, uh, output. Uh, so the three main uh, functions are uh, the update functions, which is the first part that I'm going to, to show you uh, now. And then the, the other two parts are the tab set panel and the UE output and the, the render UE. Um, in particular, uh, when um, we, we see, uh, we know that uh, we have two parts in the app, user interface and the server. When we uh, apply um, a dynamic, we are going to apply this dynamic in the server um, in a way that uh, uh, it can be see uh, the, the, the input uh, um, set in the user interface. So the use, user interface usually is done like a fluid page, and then we have uh, an ID input function. And now for applying a dynamic, we use an action button function in the user interface. While in the server, we have uh, um, an observer event, which is linked to this function is linked to the input of the ID that we have established here. And then we have the update ID input function. So basically, uh, to apply a dynamic input, we have an action button and then the observer event and the update ID input functions in the server. As you can see here, we have an ID input and then the update ID input in the server. The update function allows you to modify the control after it has been created with a, seri a series of ID input and update ID input functions, as I've said, just said. Um, as, as you may know, we, we can have text input we can have numeric input. We can have uh, also add to these two a select input or a slider input. Uh, to all these um, features uh, that we add and we call uh, by in our user interface, um, we need to update to see the dynamic. We need to update them in the server with this function, update ID input. In this case, it's a text. In this case, it's a numeric. In this case, it's select. In this other case, it's slider. Uh, obviously, there are many type of apps. OK, so they're very simple ones. They're very complicated. When you go to make more complicated apps, you may want to set hierarchicals. Uh, considering freezing things and uh, uh, very important consideration should be done to circular references. Uh, the book uh, has made different uh, and several examples uh, to how, for example, set up a table, um, which is uh, can be, uh, for example, seen. Um, uh, this is the very the, the very first uh, example that you can see um, um, it, you can see here and this uh, this uh, this app will let you um, w when you make modification of this app automatically with a, a dynamic user interface, you may uh, encounter some uh, um, hierarchical law within the inputs that you have created. So uh, these are not right hierarchy, that, uh, part of the data. 
So it's important that you consider this uh, um, because it can uh, create some uh, um, re re negative reactive input. So for this reason, uh, you may want to use a freezing reactive input. Uh, and this, wh where it goes, how can I use this freezing reactive uh, input? You just add it to the server to the part of the server between the observer event and the update input. Then I'm going to, to show you this in more uh, uh, in, um, details. Uh, obviously, when you make an app, for example, with lots of uh, the, like a table that you want to select part of the table, I think you may want to consider a circularity. Uh, and this can happen because a circularity can uh, create lots of problems. So it's important that you are able to set up uh, a command that will be able to freeze uh, the value that you don't want to be updated and then release it at the end. This is basically the main part of this thing. An example of the dynamic action is the action button, as I said uh, to the beginning, and uh, how it works. Um, I have um, set up an app, very simple one, based based on on one of the example in the in the book, uh, with a reset uh, button. And this reset button will be uh, it's a very straightforward visualization of the dynamic of the app. And uh, um, uh, just let me know if you can see, if I show you uh, the, the, can you see it? I don't think so. Are you trying to show your, um, our studio screen? Or okay, something? okay, that, that's what I want. Okay, so for example, this, the, this is, um, a very simple app. Okay. Um, we this still is see uh, the browser. We don't see your R uh, Okay. So I need to okay. make a new share. Sorry about that. Okay. This is a, a very simple app that I've made just to show you uh, how the, the dynamics, what, what is the dynamics that you are going to add in your app. Sorry, you have Federica, a slide. It's... Yes. Sorry, it's it it's still only showing the um the the browser page of your ah okay 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 sorry about that okay this is the the very simple app uh, you have a slider you know how to make it and then you modify the slider to a different level of the temperature this is the spring this temperature is... this. Sorry, yes. I don't mean to keep busting in. I've, I've just got a black screen here. Um, okay. You... okay. Ah. No, it works. Can see. Okay, so. Um, Basically, uh, you can see this. Uh, okay, uh, so you, you cannot see the app if I show if I share it like this. So, so the last time we saw your R Studio window for the last few seconds. Okay. Basically, this is the the app with the temperature. The, uh, a very simple one and um, uh, there is a slider with the temperature uh, and I've set uh, um, the, the, the um, an average value of 21 degree, Celsius degree and it goes from a minimum of 19 to a maximum of 25. This is the action button that reset the slider to uh, a value that I have settled uh, uh, of my choice. This is what happened in the user interface. While in the server, the observer event 
is linked to the reset part of the input, which is the action button. And then update, the update slider, because in this case I have a slider input, um, is, uh, is uh, the, the normal one. Mm. Uh, it is just as normal, if, even if, um, uh, as well as you, uh, if you haven't uh, set uh, a reset action button. So the updates slider input is will be uh, the same one function. The only things that change is this bit here. So the input will be linked to the reset, which is the uh, the variable of the action button function. Okay, the, the, this app is uh, uh, on the examples uh, in the. Uh, in the GitHub page, and then I'll show you uh, later. Uh, um, so, because I've made another example, which uh, has both features. So that, that one was the very simple one. And the last one, which is included, is very, uh, it's, it's more complete uh, um, as the, the visibility and the action button with the reset. So this is was the the, uh, the the one I have just said was the first part with updating input in a, in a dynamic way. The second part, which is the main part uh, and is the big takeaway of the chapter, is the dynamic visibility. Um, what is the dynamic visibility? Basically, it's a tab set. Uh, we know what is a tab that we can set. Uh, in our app. Um, in this context, the, um, the, the tab set panel function uh, will be updated in the server as uh, with the, the update tab set, pan, tab set panel function in a way that can be seen or not. So you can show or hide uh, a tab uh, in your uh, in your app, but it stays there, and this is the main part because then we can see this at the, uh, at the end for the third part, which is the rendering uh, user interface. You are not to uh, um, hiding a tab set. You are not modifying or destroy any output for creating a new one. You are just hiding an output and then pull it out to see when you, when you need it. And this is a more stable feature, just how it is mentioned in the book. Basically, uh, this is done to enhance your app with features and everything. And there are many uh, examples available in the gallery. Just to show you uh, how it can be done, you have uh, the user interface and uh, uh, you can add a switcher. Basically, with the switcher, you switch between tabs of your app, but you won't see them. So you, you, um, you, um, you keep going seeing just one page, but underneath, hidden, will be other, um, other tabs. And to do this, you uh, need to, um, in the main panel, set up a tab set panel with an ID that I have, uh, just as the same in the book, uh, named uh, as a switcher, and add the type. And this is what it changed, what the, the, the change is here, because you need to, to say hidden. And basically, in the server, now uh, in this, in this uh, example, we have two tabs, uh, a plot and a summary. In the server, you have the observer event set to controller. I have called it controller. The choices are plot and summary as my two tabs. And then the update tab set panel set to switcher 
to the ID. So this way, you have a stable condition to see one panel as a visualization and underneath more pages. Obviously, uh, um, if you go forward with these uh, features, you may want to, uh, this is, will be the case of having many pages, uh, an app with many pages, and a slider underneath to switch between pages. So, um, finally, for, for this uh, second part of the dynamic visibility, there is a conditional UE. And this is, again, a very important part because you can set, make the, your app more uh, running smoothly, uh, setting up a chunk uh, of the code separately from the app, and then embedding uh, back inside so you still have a visualization of a simple app or in this case a simple user interface but you have a, the, 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 a chunk of the, the user interface made separately so you can modify it and everything and then call it in the user interface uh, there are more features that will be uh, seen in particular uh, than in other chapter. Here is mentioned chapter 18 functions with a wizard technique using switch page function, as I said before. And this is the second part. So we have said updating input, dynamic visibility, and now we are going to see the rendering part. Uh, which is the third and last part of the, the book, the, the, the chapter. This um, is the part that says, destroy my output because I want to create a new one. And you do this uh, applying a UE output and you are going to render this output uh, calling render user interface function in the server. These are the last two functions of the, of the chapter, and these are for applying the technique of rendering the user interface by setting the value of a new input to the current value of the existing control. This let the developer um, create, modify the user interface while the app is running. So basically, you, your app, you uh, set your user interface out output, and then you're rendering a new output calling a render uh, user interface function, which is modifying this, this uh, simple example. Um, the output of the user interface to make a new one. The, the book mentioned uh, careful attention to this because it may cause uh, a delay in showing up the, um, the app uh, because it, it needs to destroy an app to output for creating a new one. Um, in addition the, to yes, the other thing is um, if you so if you scroll up just a touch, so if you don't actually have that select input type um, and then have the slider numeric, and you actually are deciding on what to like uh, how to classify your numeric output from your render UI um, from another render UI, you have to put. Uh, require or like a hold on it or otherwise the entire thing will crash and tell you that uh, it can't basically it can't determine what value to use for this uh, for this because it's not yet defined so because you define it in the select input it'll work but if that was done in another render UI it would get angry uh, basically you need to be um, patient because it takes a while to load up the app uh, if you have many input uh, requests 
and you need to consider it to add more functions. There, may, there are some uh, more functions mentioned in the book, and this is an, an example is isolate function. Um, for isolating some values that you want to be preserved in, uh, when you change uh, the output uh, to, an out, to a new one. Uh, because otherwise it, it doesn't uh, make errors or everything, but it takes more time basically. But it, it's more dynamic and it's better. So this is a uh, looking forward features, um, but it, it's important to take consideration of the, 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 the visualization that you want to, uh, to give because um, if you um, want more stability and you just need a, a, a one, ta uh, one uh, uh, um, tab, uh, only one tab to, to visualize, you may want to use uh, uh, the dynamic visibility, basically. Um, I'd like to, to show you the... Um, uh, th there are multiple other uh, features that can be added, uh, and this can be seen uh, in the in the book, for example. Uh, as you can see, um, for example, you might want to um, uh, add uh, um, searching boxes. Uh, and when you set, uh, call for an input, uh, your output will change. And this will change vi virtually, destroying the, the previous one. And this is something that doesn't happen to uh, hiding panels. Okay. Um, the book also mentioned uh, library poor for this third part of the chapter uh, and uh, um, the use of uh, this other function map reduce uh, um, because uh, it's important to set up uh, uh, functionalities uh, when using rendering uh, function for the user interface. I'd like to show you the, the app so I just stop a minute sharing, so um, I will be able to um, to show you the, the app. Uh, and and th this is all for the chapter. It is not much. Uh, um obviously when you, when you um i can say when you um create an app there is always some uh, new things to consider so it's important for for you to to have an idea of, of what you can add uh, and what you have a disposition for as a function to use. Let's see if I can share this uh, the app. Okay, so this is a, this is a, a, a simple app. Uh, it can be found uh, in uh, within in the gallery. Can you see it clearly? No. Um, in the example, you have more tabs here. Uh, what I have done, and the, the, it's in the example, is that you, uh, I have hidden uh, a second tab, the second tab, and I have put it here. So if I want to show it, I show it. If I don't want to show it, it's, it's just not there. But nothing uh, can, uh, it's very stable like this. And then I've set a reset button to bring it back to plot. Just to, to do a simple thing. For example, you can modify these things and then see the summary and then reset to plot. Uh, 
ok so it's done for me <laughs> um there's many more things to see to if i want if you want i, I can show you more uh examples uh, but the main takeaway is done basically cool. so if yeah, i nice. hope to be uh, said clear some yeah yeah no it's great uh, does anyone have any questions or anything before uh... It's been pretty quiet. And the, the, the um, if you uh, if you want, uh, we, we can have we can take a, a, an app and see how it works with the code. Uh, if cool. you have questions, how to uh, add this uh, the, the function uh, in it or um... okay, yeah, yeah, cool, cool. <laughs> Yeah, an example would make things more concrete. Uh, I feel there's lots of information. <laughs> um, <laughs> Takes some time to digest. Basically, for example, if you want to to add a reset button, um, it would be. Uh, um, It would be easy to for you to see uh, how to 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 add the, the reset button, for example. No. This is the the simple the simple thing that you can um, that you can see. Uh, this is the uh, a very simple app. And you add an action button, a difference to uh, j just you adding something with the D reset, and then you observe the event of D reset and update the slider or uh, the tab, uh, anything that you are showing to a one desired uh, value, for example. Uh, in uh, in the book, there are other examples of these kinds. Uh, there are many other um, different uh, uh, options that can be done. For example, always in terms of uh, visualizing or not. For example, this app uh, presents you with uh, more choices than when you have cho uh, chosen three, for example, as a number of colors, uh, it reduces to, to this. Basically, hide a part of the app. Um, and um, what else I can show you? Uh, in ter what um, if you you can ask some questions? So I know what uh, what will be um, to to show you more would be more suitable to show you. Let's see. There was one app that was very interesting to see. And this is made with uh, um, many, uh, it's like a, um, a table and you can uh, um, modify this table as long as you like you can uh, like um, uh, searching an app of your 
in, in the gallery and then make this modification. There are several uh, exercises uh, you can solve it, uh, adding the, the, the function that are, are just in the notes of just um, set. Mm, for example, what else can I show you? Do, do you have any questions? For example, the... um, I don't think anyone that, uh, anyone's come forward with any questions so far, <laughs> uh, unless they want to ask them now. Um, so um uh, ma, ma, ma. did anyone have time to look at the exercises i i really i haven't had time but um i think that might also be interesting at, like... to see uh, i was i did a couple of them um so i think like one or two from was there a, something a couple different sections in there like that you you might be able to teach us now <laughs> um let, give me a minute let me look into it i don't remember exactly what they were Um. Or maybe I, I think next week's chapter is also pretty short. Maybe we can also um, check out the exercises, and if there's more time next week, we can also have a look at them next week again. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. Idea. Yeah. Man, I haven't looked at um, the next chapter actually yet, <laughs> so it is sure right. Next week was the bookmarking, right? That's, I think, mm -hmm. it's yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so. yeah, I think the, the exercises I did were just kind of pretty basic and just like reiterating, like, um, uh, just, just show us, is it? sure. So, let's see, can I? Is that, can you see yep, it? That's, yeah, yeah. All right, those are all named the same, so I don't know which one's which. <laughs> so let me close them all out. Um, let's see. So this is, okay, so this is from the, this is like the tab, tab set panels, right? So you show and hide, which I thought that was really cool because it's basically having like multiple pages. You have like multiple pages, but you just mm. can't really see them. So from the user perspective, they can't really. Uh, but um, when you run the app, we cannot see it. Uh oh, okay. Uh, this is the problem. <laughs> yeah, I have it because I have it to run. You need to stop the uh, you need to, uh, okay, I don't know, but you need to stop this sharing this and uh, sharing the the app when you have run it, basically. It works. Thanks, because I have it uh, default to pop up in the browser. Why is it not? 
No, because oh, uh, yeah. you have chosen this this view, so it doesn't. Yeah, mean... it's. Ah, okay. There we go. Uh, I don't. I'm running out of the hall. Let me see when we join this window. How about now? Nope. Nope. Oh my goodness. Running so <laughs> That's going to be back. I don't know what all these options are. <laughs> I don't know they're here. I can just do that. That one works. <laughs> yeah. So this is really simple. Just like if, you know, sometimes if you have like, when you're doing like a search on a website where you can click like an advanced search, that was basically the idea for this. And just I just made up some control and then an option to say advanced control. So it just adds an ex extra one here. Um, so these are like two um, two tab panels. One is just like I had one called the, for the basic controls, and then one for the sort of advanced controls to give you a little a little more there. Um, let's see what other ones did I do. Oh, okay. So this one's updating inputs. I think this was the first. Oh, yeah, okay. this is like the I first. wanted to see. So this basically you update input. This is a um a, a date one. So what you do is so it has the option to select um a year, but once you select a year, you want to filter the the calendar. So you can't. So if the year is twenty twenty. You can't go back before twenty twenty, and you can't go after. Uh, you go to December. It doesn't let you go any farther. So the same thing you put like say 2021, it's gonna automatically, so basically it changes the, the choice of dates that you can pick. Okay, so you had to set the minimum date as date and pass, uh, because uh, you- Yeah. Uh, okay. So I just said like, yeah, so I just said, well, we know the year and I know the first, you know, you know the first day and last day of the mm -hmm. year. So that creates the, the, the min and max date and then, you can set that okay. on the min and max and the uh, update. Yeah. Can, yes, can you can you add this in the in the example? Yes. Sure. And let's see, I think that was a, a lot. Um, a lot of these are also in the. There's a solutions manual that has most of the ones from this chapter. I don't know. Oh, this is like the hierarchical um, select boxes. So, so you first pick like a state and then a county. So basically there's a data frame that, that it's uh, having you use. And so you pick a, a state and then it lists all, all the counties in the state. And then I guess, um, Alaska calls them boroughs instead of counties, and then um, there's Louisiana um, calls uh, instead of county they call it a parish. So it, like updates to match. So let's see how did I do that? Okay, so first thing made it reactive on the state. So there's state input and then county input. So just filtering on, on the state whenever that's selected. And then whenever that's changed, um, changing a label based on which state it is. So borough, parish, or county. And then um, name here is a variable in the data frame that gives the county name. So once the once state gets changed, it's going to pull all the unique county names and then just change the choices in the in the, the county select input. Um, the, this freeze reactive value is um, we've talked about a bit in the book. So if you didn't, I think if you didn't have this, whenever you change the state, you'll get like a little bit of a flash of like red here, which is like I think it, like this component the, or the second select input is set to null, so it doesn't know doesn't have the values, it doesn't know what to do. So this freeze reactive value will, when this changes, it says, wait, don't update the second one until we figure out 
until this other reactive uh, resolves and we figure out what, what to put in there. And yeah, that's all I got for these. Cool. Yeah, no, that's nice. Um, um, okay, uh, cool. Well, in that uh, case, if if no one's got any further questions, then we've got um, uh, next week, we've got the bookmarking uh, chapter as well, um, which I don't think Layla was here today. Uh, Layla's going to present. And uh, great, yeah. Uh, if you want to all thank Federico for doing the um, talk and the slides and everything uh, today. Um, yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, thank you. Gonna, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Have a nice evening. Bye bye. Thank you. See you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.